Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. He's really good. God is good. <laughs> um, where do we start? God is good. <laughs> He's good. And it's so awesome that we get to come together as one body to encourage one another. More and more, especially lately, God has been revealing to me more and more what it means that we work as a body, that we depend on one another as a body, every single last one of us. How I depend on you, you depend on me, every last one of us depends on each other so much. And I see how in these days, like it's becoming so much more or so much less about this stage and so much more about how we interact with one another outside and how much we can be a blessing to each other and encourage each other every single day throughout our daily walk. How we could be so encouraged by just looking at each other's lives and just fueling off of that back and forth. And I've been so caught up in Apostle Paul's life lately. What I've been reading so much has always been Apostle Paul's letters. Apostle Paul, so much of just everything that he's always sh like trying to, trying to sh share. And one thing that I realized about Apostle Paul is he, every single time, he, he, it seems like his main like, his messages, is, it always has to do with how can I be more efficient? Apostle Paul is always talking about, like, how, how can I do this a little bit better? He says, I want to walk with purpose in every single step. How do I walk in purpose in every single step? And I begin to think about my life. How can I walk in purpose in my job, in my day-to-day -day life when I go to work, when I'm in school, wherever I may be, when I'm at church? When I go to the store, am I just going to grab some milk or is there a purpose that I need to fulfill there too? Is there a person that I need to see there too? Is there, some, is there a need that I need to see? Because how, how can I walk with purpose in every single step? And every time he's going to visit a church, he goes to a church and he's like, hey, I'm going to, I need to impart something to you guys. I need to lay my hands on you. I need to give you some sort of gift. I need to, there's a mission for me. There's something that I need to do. But at the same time, I'm going to be so encouraged by you guys. You know, for him, it's, not, it's never just like, it's, it's something that I can give and then there's something that I can receive from you too. And I feel like so many of us, especially in the Western church, has become so much about like coming and what can I receive? So many of us come to church and it's like, I need to receive something, God, I need a word from you. I'm in this dry season, I need something. And we come and then it's like some kid goes on a stage and it's like, well, and there's nothing for me here and we leave. And I feel like there's something that can change in our perspective when it goes from what can I receive to what can I give. I believe that if every single one of us would come to church, if every single one of us would walk and have this mindset, what can I give? How can I be a blessing? Where can I step in? Then there will be no need in this church. If every last one of you, however many of us there are, 200, 100, whatever, 1,000, <laughs> There's, however many of us there is, if every last one of you says, man, I'm gonna go, I need to encourage somebody. Maybe there's a word of wisdom I need to give to somebody, whatever it may be. And if I, I, I come up, I bless Tim, I bless Dan, whatever it is, but Mark comes up to me and he gives me a blessing. It's, it's how it works. All of us depend on each other. There's something that each of us can take from one another. We get a pull on each other's giftings. I mean, I remember I, I would be having a bad day, you come to prayer, I would just be tucked away in the corner and it's like, God, like, man, I hope somebody comes up and prays for me. Like, I hope somebody prophesies to me something. You're just standing there, like, hoping somebody comes. It's like, dude, like, I can come up to somebody and be like, hey, like, can you pray for me? You, you get a pull on somebody's gifting. Apostle Paul, he, he's writing to Philemon. He's like, I need some sort of use from you in the kingdom. So um, um, get, 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 get an offering ready for me. You know, like, he, he's, not, he's not, like, you know, shy about it. He's just, like, bold. Like, he's just calling out giftings in people. Like, hey, you're very encouraging. I need some right now. Like, can you encourage me right now? I need some wisdom. I need, I need something. And we get to pull on one another on the giftings that we have for each other. We get to work as one body. Like, we, we need one another. Apostle Paul, every single time, Prepare an offering for me. I need, I need some use for me. Timothy, he's always encouraging, always finding a way. There's more, always there's more.
You know, she says, he said to Philemon, I need some use for you in the kingdom. Every last one of us here has a use in the kingdom and in the body of Christ. In 2 Peter 1, 3, it says, I have give, it says, I have given you everything I need. We have been given everything that we need to live a godly life. We have been given everything we need to be a blessing. God gave us his spirit. He placed his spirit on the inside of us. We have everything now. And now Apostle Paul's like, okay, now like, I need some sort of, we need some sort of use from this. We, we need to find a way that every last one of you becomes a blessing now. That the spirit begins to move through you now. Sorry, my, my thoughts are really scattered right now. I'm like all over the place. I realized one thing in my life. It's that, you know, the more, the more I find my, myself in a place where I, I'm working on myself, like, uh, like I, I just need to keep working. I need to build myself. I need to do this. The, the more you're busy working on you and you and you, the more empty you always feel. But every single time when you're in this place where you're being generous where you're giving, where you're trying to be a blessing. That's where you feel that satisfaction. That's where you feel purpose. That's where you feel like you have a purpose, you have a place. The more that we're focused on ourselves, the more it's, you know, like it's, it's not about us. Everything that God has given, it's not just for you. Everything that God has blessed you with, every single talent that you have, every single gifting that you have, is to be a blessing to someone else. Everything that I learned, it's not just for myself, it's not just for me to make money, it's for me to be a blessing to someone else. Man, like I did tile for four years. I literally broke my back doing tile. Like I genuinely couldn't walk physically after that. But you know, and it's like, okay, like you make your money, you make a lot, like I don't miss it, but I remember there was a moment uh, when Roman Balkan from this church, he got, he got paralyzed and he needed, pretty much they needed to make his house completely handicap accessible. And it's, I remember we would go there, we were working like so many people that in construction like would go, we're going like in one week, completely remodeled his house, just all of us did what we could. And it's like, it seems like you're working so hard and it's like working till four in the morning, whatever you're doing, but inside there's such, like, there's such a satisfaction, like yes, like I finally, this is what I learned, something that I can be a blessing and this is something now that I can give. It's not just for me to make some money and you know, go about my day, but it's something where I can be a blessing to somebody else now. Everything I have is to be a blessing to somebody else. You know, the church, in, the first church in Acts that said that they had no need. They were lacking in absolutely nothing. And that was because every last person there was so generous. It says that people were giving away their homes, their land, everything that they had, they had the mindset of, I need to give. You see, one simple mind sh mindset shift of, man, like, it's not about what, they receive the power of the Holy Spirit, they have it. I would say that most of us here, we already received the Holy Spirit. We received God, we received a new life, we're a new creation, all things passed away, all things are new. We received it and now it's this mindset of how can I give now? What more can I give, what more can I do? When every last person lives like that, there's no need. We live, that's why we live in perfect unity when it comes from what can I get? Because I have gotten everything I need already. We have received everything that we need, it's already on the inside. And the way that it begins to you know, come out is when, we, is when we're a blessing to one another. I realized in myself even like, why can't, why do I have a hard time stepping into my gifting so often? Why do I have such a hard time being a blessing? Why do I always get so caught up with work? Why do I get caught up in myself? Um, whenever I get asked to you know, do something in the church, when you get asked to preach, you always try to find some sort of excuse. There's always something, you know? And I realized that so many of us, the reason why we don't step into our gifting, the, so, the reason why so many don't step into the call is because of false humility, because of low self-esteem, because we always begin to point at the flesh. You know, it's funny because when we get born again, we, we get a new spirit, we're a new man. Apostle Paul said in Romans, you, you need to reckon yourself free indeed. 
You need to be able to wake up every morning and say, no, I've been free indeed. I'm a new creation. Everything has passed away. And then when it comes to actually doing the things of the Spirit right away, we don't talk about the Spirit anymore. Now we start pointing out our flesh, like, no, I have this, I have that. Um, I still have this addiction. I was struggling with that. Um, you begin to analyze your whole week. I did this, I did that. I'm not... Every single time when it comes to finally doing the things of the Spirit, but now we begin to point out the flesh. And Apostle Paul said, that's foolishness. In Corinthians, he said, he said, he said why do so many of you like to talk about the flesh? Why do you start going into the flesh? Why do you start pointing at the thing that, you know, is bringing you down? Why, why are you even talking about it? And he's like, okay, he, he's like, he said, this is something that fools talk about, but let me take a second. He's like, if you guys want to go there, let's let, let just go there. Here, I, I want to read it in Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Again, I say, don't think that I am a fool to talk like this. But even if you do listen to me as you would to a foolish person, while I also boast a little. Such boasting is not from the Lord, but I'm acting like a fool. And since others boast about their human's achievements, then I will too. So pretty much Apostle Paul's like, let me just pretend like I'm dumb for a second, for your sake. He's like, if I need to boast, I would rather boast about the things that show how weak I am. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is worthy of eternal praise, knows I am not lying. The boasting will do no good, but I must go on. I will reluctantly tell about visions and revelations from the Lord. I was caught up to the third heaven 14 years ago. Whether I was in my body or out of my body, I don't know. Only God knows. Yes, only God knows whether I was in my body or outside my body, but I do know that I was caught up to paradise and heard things so astounding that they cannot be expressed in words. Things no human is allowed to tell. That experience is worth boasting about, but I'm not going to do it. I will boast only about my weaknesses. If I wanted to boast, I would be no fool in doing so because I would be telling the truth, but I won't do it because I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond what they can see in my life or hear in my message. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Interesting enough, Apostle Paul said, I'm gonna boast in my weakness. You know, today so many people are so afraid of that. No, 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 I, I, I'm a son. I'm a son, don't, no, don't say that. Don't, don't, don't profess that over your life. I'm a son, like, you don't need to say that. Apostle Paul's like, hey, I'll, let me just boast in my weakness for a second. Yeah, I've been persecuted. Yeah, I have struggles. How many of us here have struggles? Yeah, maybe I was abused as a kid. Maybe I went through some things. Maybe I was, maybe I was shy. Maybe the personality test says I'm an introvert. I'm not called to the stage. There's so many things that we can point at and that we want to just like forget about. Apostle Paul's like, no, like, why don't, we, why don't we brag about that a little bit? Yeah, I was that shy kid. I am that introvert. And that's the same person that God is going to begin to use now. That is the same voice that God is going to begin to raise up for his glory. It's not, it's not like, it's not something that we need to be afraid of. Like, why are we afraid to talk about something that's dead? <laughs> that's the old me. That's the, that's the flesh. It's been crucified 2,000 years ago with Christ. I'm a new creation now. Why should I be afraid to talk about it? Why don't I actually say it louder? Yeah, I am that shy kid. I am that introvert. And that's exactly the kind of vessel that God's going to use now. And how much more embarrassing is it for the devil when God begins to use these kinds of vessels to destroy his kingdom? God doesn't use perfect vessels. God, we're just vessels, it says, containing a treasure on the inside. Without the Holy Spirit, without that treasure inside, we're just a vessel, we're nothing. Yeah, man, I am like a piece of crap, honestly. Without the Holy Spirit, I have nothing to boast about. I'm like, there's literally nothing there. But because of his Holy Spirit, now it is working through me. In John 17, 22, Jesus said, you have placed your glory inside them. He's literally given us his glory. He's given us his spirit. 
The same one that raised Christ from the dead and now it's his spirit that's at work. And now we get a bold and be like, yeah, devil, what do you wanna say about me? What do you wanna say about my past? That's exactly what God is gonna use now to destroy your kingdom. I'm not afraid of it, it's dead, it's in the past. Quantum, they gave Max the shyest kid award in high school. And I mean, not, not only that in high school, in, in this church, everybody that knows Max, that's the last kid they would expect to now be the loudest voice on the reservation. Come on, this is exactly what God is doing and I see him more and more in so many people that are just rising up. Like, do you understand that every single attack that the enemy tries to throw you, that he did from your childhood, every single lie that he whispered into your ear, says that everything works together for good to those that love God. So do you understand that everything that the devil tries to throw at you is actually working for your benefit? When the devil thought that he killed Jesus, what was that? That was the biggest blessing for each and every single one of us here today. Because that's the way that Jesus brought, reconciled us back to him when he, when he defeated death and arose again. Everything that the enemy throws at you, it turns back for good. Do you understand that every single time that the enemy tries to attack you, he's actually, he's actually perfecting you a little bit more? Because it's only gonna work out for good once again. But do you know why he keeps on doing it? Because he knows that there's a chance that you'll still probably give him some room. That instead of lifting your hands and saying, and standing on truth, you might put your head down and, and give him the victory. I'm just going through my dry season right now, I don't get it. Everything that the devil throws at you, like do you guys realize that like we're, like you're untouchable. Matter of fact, like this is something that might even, like should even encourage you all the more, like, like, like why does he feel the need to attack you? That should only be that much more encouraging. It's only gonna work out for my benefits, it's only gonna work out for my good. Come on, what do you want to say about me? Come on, bring it on. Like, God's still going to use this vessel. I'm sorry. The treasure is still in, on the inside. He has given us the fullness of his presence. Like I, like, I cannot wrap my mind around it. He has given us the fullness of his presence. It says he's literally given us his glory. And so many, so many of us have this, like, false humility. No, like, uh, that's not me. I'm not called to the stage. I'm not, I'm not called for that. I don't want to... I'm supposed to be kind of in the background. No, like we don't take away glory from God by doing, by doing these things. As a matter of fact, it brings God glory when we step out in boldness. It brings him glory. Man, I feel like God just wants to break off so many lies today. Just, it's such a fine line, like it's such a simple perspective shift. From, from putting your chin down and being discouraged to, this is gonna work out for my good, I, I'm not worried. That one thing is exactly what's gonna change the whole entire circumstance for you. Either you give the devil the victory or it works around for your good and builds you even more, shapes you even more, turns you more into his image. For what we proclaim is not ourselves but Jesus Christ as the Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not us. We are afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. You know, one man of God, he said, this is probably something that, man, it's literally a quote that I live by that I believe is just what will always lead me into victorious Christianity is this, it's I understand how worthless I am without Christ, but in the same hand, I understand how beautiful and powerful we are with him. It's not one or the other. It, it, it seems like there's two sides, like who do you think you are? You know, like people point at charismatic, so always preaching about you, 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 like who do you think you are? You're nothing, it's all about Jesus. And then it seems like so many people are like, oh, like God's giving you the victory. It's, it's not one or the other, it's both. We're jars of clay, yes, there's the flesh, but 
there's the Spirit of God on the inside of us now too. It's His glory that's working in us. It's not us, it's Him. He, he's the one that brings the healing. He's the one that brings the breakthrough. He's the one that brings the deliverance. And we are the vessel. All we need to do is go. All we need to do is be available. All we need to do is have that mindset of how can I go and be a blessing? Come on, we're gonna pray soon. We're gonna pray soon. I think the last thing is that You know, Apostle Paul, the same one who said, I walk, with, I walk with purpose in every single step. He said, at the very last one of his letters, he said, everything I consider garbage in comparison to this one thing, just to know Christ and him crucified. And I think that that's the one thing that we always need to latch on. How can I know God more? to know him more. I need to know the one that is now living on the inside of me. I need to know the one that is now working through me. The more I get to know him by his word, the more I get to know him by spending time in the secret place with him. The more I'm transformed into his image, the more I become like him, the more he begins to move through me, the more I can discern what's of him and what's not of him. He says all I need to know is to know God and him crucified. How can I know God more crucified? Come on, this is Apostle Paul at the end of his days. He's done everything. I mean, you read through his letters. He said, I, I've been through everything, shipwreck, all that. I've done everything I can. And he's like, all that's garbage. I just need to know Christ and him crucified. Why? You know, I, I, I remember I would always find myself, we, like, you can get frustrated so easily. I remember, like, with my dad, I would get frustrated with him pretty quickly about random little things. Like, you know, and, and you don't want to obey. You don't want to whatever, you're not gonna honor him. It's really easy, you know, to, to begin to find faults and, you know, like our fathers on earth might, might have a couple of faults here and there that we can always point at, but I remember after I began to actually spend time with him as I grew up, just sit on the couch and spend 30 minutes talking to him, have some tea with him. I remember when you begin to know his heart, when you begin to really understand his motives and everything that he did to, man, <laughs> to raise us ungrateful kids, you know? Like, how can he move here with eight kids from a foreign country, move here, be up at 4 a.m. every day working in some shipyard, working, providing for us, making sure that, you know, we're fed. Make it, every time, when, when you begin to know his heart, when he begins to speak his heart, you leave that place like, man, like, man, I suck, you know? Like, I, I really want to, like, uh, how was I complaining about him before? Like, how can I, like, you want to now help him. You want to honor him. You want to do anything you can now to be, like, a blessing back to your father. And we use the same thing with our heavenly father. Like, we get discouraged so easily. We, so easily we're, like, we lose focus. We get foggy, whatever it is. But you spend some time with him. You spend some time in his goodness. You understand his heart and his motives. And, and you're compelled now. You're compelled to step into the things that he calls you to. It compels you just to know him, to be in that place constantly. God, I need to know more of you. I want to be with you. And you transform into his image more and more. Whatever the devil tries to throw my way, I'm not worried about. It's going to work out for good. I just need to be with my father. Whatever weaknesses I may have, yeah, let me boast about it. God is still going to use me because he loves me, because he needs a vessel on this earth, and I'm available We've been given everything that we need. It's on the inside of us. We have everything we need, church. We have one another. We have one another. God bless, that's so cute. But come on, we're, we're gonna pray. Let's stand up. I, I just, I feel like, like never before, I feel like God is, man, when you, when you begin to see what God is doing, it just excites you so much. It, I remember recently, I walked into church here and my, my buddy who, from another church, he, he was visiting. He, he just comes up to me and like, we, we just come up and we're like, we look at each other and he's like, you, you feel that too? And like, I knew exactly what he was talking about. Like, we look like, yeah, like, like almost like there's something, like you just felt there's something, there's something that's stirring, there's something that's happening. Like, 
there's such a hunger there. Like never before have we seen so many young people like rising up, opening up their homes, opening up ministries, stepping out. So many people that are willing to be a blessing, to pray for one another, to be generous. Man, we're stepping in, I love how George said, like we're not stepping into a new season, we have already stepped into it. Where you see so much as being birthed, so many, it's so encouraging to see people that are so young stepping out, moving by the power of the Holy Spirit. Man, God is on the move, God is working. His body is being so equipped. Where we're stepping into this fullness of, man, like I, I don't need this title, I don't need, I don't need this big place. I, I'm not insecure, I don't care if there's weakness in my life. God's grace is shown through those moments. God's strength is shown through my weakness. I'm not worried about those things. I don't need any big place. I just need to find my one little place and just be there faithfully. When I step into my place in the body and every last other person and we work in fullness as one body. And there's nothing better than that. And I just see how God is, God is raising up a generation to, man, that's after his heart. Man, to know him to know his heart guys we need to know his heart more we need to get into that secret place we need to know his heart that that's what's going to compel us there's no insecurity there's no insecurities in him whatever lies that the enemy has spoken over you whatever you went through through your childhood that's not something to that's not something to have your head down about no apostle apostle let me boast about it show the devil what kind of vessel the lord is going to use because it's not us, it's His power in us. It's His glory that's in us. It's God through us, for His name's sake. to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I became a minister. Come on, Jesus, we thank you so much. We thank you for your spirit, Jesus. We thank you for your spirit that is dwelling in us vessels, God. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit. We thank you for your love, God. We thank you that you are the Father that works out all things for our good, Jesus. That there is nothing that can bring us down, Lord, but all things work together for good that every lie that the enemy has spoken, that every attack that the enemy has thrown our way, that it is gonna work, turn around for your glory and for your name's sake, God. Father, I thank you that there's nothing that we lack in, but your spirit is sufficient in our lives. I thank you, Lord, that your grace is enough in our lives, Jesus, that we don't need to have our heads down, that we don't need to point out our flesh at the thing that is dead that was crucified 2,000 years ago with you, but we gotta stand in our new creation with you, God. And we say, here we are, God. We thank you that you have filled us with your glory and your power, God. And I pray that you begin to give us a heart of generosity, a heart of giving, God. That we would be able to walk and be a blessing to those that are around us, Jesus.
that we wouldn't just constantly be thinking about ourselves, God, but that our hearts would beat for those that are around us, that would be a blessing and an answer to all those that are around us, King Jesus, by your love and by your spirit and by your power, God. Father, we look to you, King Jesus. We look to you and we ask that you transform us, God. Transform us into your image. Give us the desires of your heart, God. Give us the desires of your heart, King Jesus. We want to know you. We want to be with you. For all things are for you. All things are through you. All things are by you. It is your strength that is in us. We don't need to go by our powers. But it is your strength working in us, God. We thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we want to know you more. Jesus, we want to know you more. Father, I pray that you just begin to activate giftings in each and every single heart tonight, God. Father, activate your children, God, that they may be a blessing to the body of Christ, Lord. Father, won't you play a purpose, God? spoken over you that that you've been using as an excuse that you've been using to be down but tonight father wants to change that in you that there's something new that you got to step into that that which the enemy has beaten on you for so long that God has begun to use you in that area to bring breakthrough to others and that place where you're broken and now God's gonna begin to use you to bring healing to the brokenhearted to bring deliverance Father, give us your heart. Jesus. Give us your heart, King Jesus. Open our eyes to those that are broken, God. God, we stand against every lie of the enemy. No weapon formed against us will prosper. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We're after your heart, Jesus. that you stir up our hearts, God. Father, won't you stir our spirits, Lord? Stir us up, King Jesus, for your glory, for your name's sake, God, that we wouldn't be satisfied with where we're at, that we wouldn't be downcast, Lord. Lift our eyes unto you, Jesus. Lift our eyes to you, God. Father, won't you encourage those that are down, Lord, But if you're in this place and you're in need of some encouragement, the altar is open as we go into worship. Feel free to come up and we'll pray for you. If you're in a place where you feel dry, where you feel like you need some encouragement, we're gonna stand together. 
I believe that God is stirring up our hearts. God is doing something in his body like never before. God is, God is stirring up giftings in each and every single heart like never before. There's something for each of you here. There's a purpose. There's a plan for each and every single heart. Father, I think that there's no one. There's no one that is lacking, God. Father, your grace is sufficient in each and every single one of us, Lord. Each and every single one of us is called and gifted, and you qualify those that you have called, Lord.